So we all know that social media is here to stay, but why is it that some people are getting rich from using and posting on social media while others, it seems as if you're possibly wasting your time and while you're just looking at pictures of your friends having a good time on a vacation, you're looking at people that it feels like they're getting ahead in life by posting their highlights, the cars, the houses that they buy, why is it that there's a group of people that absolutely are just crushing it on social media while others it feels as if it makes you feel worse about the life that you live well in this video i am going to share with you some secrets that i have used myself to generate income on social media right off of my phone so you don't need an expensive laptop you don't need an expensive camera and heck all you need is your phone regardless of the phone that you're using to already pretty much be on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, or even LinkedIn. So in this video, take out your note and your pad because we are going to be diving deep into some tips and tricks that you can use right now to generate some cash flow. Now, before giving you those tips and secrets, I first want to start out with three myths that people kind of tend to fall into whenever they are looking to start generating some money and start building their businesses, or if they already have a business off of social media. Let me give you the first one. It's this. The majority of the people before they post, they start to think, okay, I need a large audience. And look, that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, there's two sides of the board here. There is the, uh, the person that has a million followers who you would think is ultra successful, but let's be honest here. If you're not aware, there was a study or really an article that came out on an influencer that she had over a million followers and she couldn't sell not even $20,000 worth of merchandise. Now, if you think that's a lot of money, if you have a million followers, that's literally drops into a bucket of what, let's say an advertising agency or what a brand would expect you to pull. On the other side of that, I've been in a place where I've had less than 5,000 followers and I'm gonna use myself as an example as an example, less than 5,000 followers on Instagram, less than 20,000 followers on TikTok, heck, even less than 10,000 uh, subscribers on YouTube, and I've been able to generate more than $100 a day, not including ad revenue, by the way, that's just a whole different story. So this video isn't about, hey, just make a bunch of videos and YouTube's gonna pay you. That to me, that's just the icing on the cake. The second myth that we need to bust here and clarify is that you don't need to run ads on your posts unless you want to. Again, some of the best reach in my opinion is going to be the organic reach when you're looking at, let's say how many times your story has been shared or how many times your, your post has been shared. That to me is a better indicator than how many, how many dollars I can put into an ad because it lets me know that I don't have to push my content all the time because the content is speaking for itself. And third, and this was a big one, and I guess I can say this now since I'm in the swipe up club, I just finished hitting 10,000 followers over on my IG, so if you haven't done so already, make sure to follow me over on that side, over on Instagram, but the swipe up, look, you do not need the swipe up feature to send people to your website, to send people to have a consultation call with you. You don't need a swipe up to try to trick people into signing up through your funnel. Again, these are myths that I'm looking to completely disseminate here in this video and give you the reality of what it takes to make $100 a day or more on social media. Now let's talk about different platforms because different platforms have different rules of engagement and intent, but they all carry the same purpose. Meaning whenever you're posting on either a TikTok or if you're posting on a YouTube or if you're posting, let's say on Instagram or even Facebook or possibly LinkedIn, they're all going to carry the purpose of bringing in more business, but more importantly, building that relationship between you and your customer, between you and your audience. Let me give you an example with TikTok. With TikTok, everything is in short sequence. How quickly can you get off a 15, a 30 second, 45 second, or even one minute, which is the cap, of a message that is ultimately going to tell people, okay, this is someone that I can trust, let's say with my car detailing, or this is someone that I can trust if I'm looking to build a website, or this is someone that I can trust if I'm looking to hire them for photography. When it comes to YouTube, that's a bit more of a long form content that you, you want to use YouTube more as the bottom funnel. So in my opinion, TikTok is top of the funnel where you get the most engagement. YouTube is at the bottom of the funnel where at least if, that I've seen in my business, 
where people are more inclined to do business with you once they've interacted with your content on YouTube a bit more because it's educated them well beyond the level or at least demonstrated your capabilities of what you can do with you within your own industry. Again, whether you are uh, giving courses on how to flip houses, if you maybe are a photographer and you're using maybe YouTube as your catalog for maybe weddings that you've done, or possibly if you are flipping things online, maybe on eBay, maybe on Etsy, and then you're showing people your process. And again, you have maybe a product or a coaching system that you want to offer on the back end to help them build their businesses or maybe partner up with you for a share of the profit. I've noticed that on YouTube is where people get really serious. Not saying that these other platforms, they don't, because again, they all have a different purpose or a different intent, but they all carry the same purpose. But in YouTube, it's definitely someone that really wants to be well-educated. And I would venture out to say it would be the same thing on LinkedIn, where you have a mature audience that's looking to do business and transact. Now, when it comes to Instagram, Instagram, you want to treat it also as a portfolio of possible testimonials that you've done, but you do want to use the story feature over on IG. The reason for that is because the way that the algorithm works over there, you won't necessarily see someone's post, but more often than not, especially if you've been engaging with their content, maybe double tapping it or maybe messaging with someone back and forth, the algorithm is always going to push your story in front of that person. This is why it's also important to slide up in some DMs every now and then, check up on some people, see how they're doing. If someone interacted with your content, say, hey, I appreciate uh, you liking my previous post. Let me know what else you want to see over on my channel or let me know what other type of videos you would like for me to post about. I can't tell you how many times people will literally tell you, hey, I really enjoy this video, but can you talk more about this? Or, hey, I really enjoy that, but can you talk more about that? And what that ends up doing is, again, it builds that relationship with your audience, but again, it helps your content stay in front of them so that you remain relevant in the eyes of the follower and in the eyes of the consumer. Now let's talk about the infrastructure of how this is all going to work together because we tend to overcomplicate the process. I did a recent post over on my IG letting people know that I just upgraded from an iPhone 8 Plus to an iPhone 12 Pro Max. I could have bought it when the phone came out, but I wanted to prove it to myself that I can put out valuable content that I didn't need expensive equipment. And as long as I did my job by putting out content information and putting out videos that people really wanted to see, answering questions and ultimately helping out as many people as I could, my ideology behind it was it didn't really matter about how well the quality was in terms of how it looked, even though it matters but how good the quality and the quantity was in terms of the actual message that was being relayed. Now, obviously, you wanna have a nice camera if you're shooting YouTube videos or you can even use your cell phone, but when it comes to building the audience and actually generating income, once again, you don't need that. So you first have to ask and answer the first question when you are looking to monetize your channels, when you're looking to monetize your social platforms. What product or service are you offering? Are you a makeup artist? Are you a photographer? Do you run a consultation service? Do you run a financial service where maybe you can help people out with their life insurance? Maybe you can help people out with their filing their taxes. Possibly if maybe you run an Airbnb business and you're looking to teach that to other people, how well versed are you in that area? Is, is it gonna be a one tier program? Is it going to be a sign up? Is it gonna be a free webinar that then leads into a higher ticket sale? These are all different questions that you can be asking yourself. And again, don't overcomplicate it. If you don't have the product, well, guess what the product is? The product is you. That consultation, yeah, you're the product. Maybe the Zoom call that they wanna get on, on a call with you or maybe a FaceTime for 30 minutes, yeah. You're the product, they want to pick at your brain. So why not maybe sell some of your time because we all know that time is the most important commodity and asset that we actually own. Why not sell some of that time for a price rather than just doing charity work? And again, I'm not against you doing things for free, but if you're looking to monetize for the purpose of this video, if you're looking to monetize, why not put a time or, or why not put a price on the time that you're spending with people. Secondly, you want to constantly observe your audience or the people that are kind of like your audience if maybe you're looking at another influencer or maybe if you're looking at another profile or another channel and you wanna see what type of questions they're asking. You want to search for the problems and then you want to create your content in form of solution around those problems. This is ultimately going to serve as honey on a stick rather than going out and trying to use a net to capture bees, right? That's the most interesting analogy that I can possibly use, but in my mind, 
it makes sense where you're attracting people to you and you become a magnet rather than you actually having to go out and do all of the hard work and trying to convince people to do business with you. This next one is important and I put an asterisk next to it because it's going to help boost your credibility with your audience and that is cross collaboration. Try to find an influencer if maybe they are within your space, maybe that have a larger following than you would, would, my, would be my preferred method of taking this on or right around the same level. You, what you want to do is even if they're not in your same space, maybe something that kind of complements what you already do. So let's say if you're teaming up with someone that talks about, let's say, fixing credit and you are in the insurance space, that in my opinion would be a good tag team. Maybe if you are a videographer and you want to team up with someone who's an influencer, maybe a lifestyle vlogger, that would be a good combination that you would want to team up with because what ends up happening is we throw this word around, but sometimes we don't really know it's social proof. What happens with social proof is, let's be honest here, humans are designed with a herd mentality, meaning we're all going to jump in the pool, but we want to make sure that this person jumps in first just to make sure the water is not too cold. If this person isn't complaining about the water being too cold, then we're all going to jump in and it's going to be a big pool party. It's the same thing when it comes to social media. Someone's gonna like your post, someone's gonna comment. Notice that whenever two or three people comment, all of a sudden, all the, everyone starts commenting and you just have a bunch of comments and dialogues happening on your post. It's the same thing here. Once one person says, you know, this person was pretty cool, they helped me out with XYZ, now you have a really a countless amount of people in your DM asking you, hey, can you help me? Hey, I was referred to you by so-and-so. And at that point, that's when the game changes. Now, the final thing that you want to do is you want to create content from all angles and you want to have a CTA attached to that, which is a call to action. Maybe you speak better than what you actually write. Well, guess what? It looks like video is going to be for you. What about if you're good at both or at least you want to try both because you don't really know if you're good at one or the other until you actually try it and and you start checking out the engagement of what your audience prefers for you to communicate. Remember, if you're on TikTok, that's going to be a bit faster. If you're on LinkedIn, that could be better if you have maybe a blend between a semi long form video as well as a written text. And then if you are on Instagram, you wanna have a mix between uh, posting either maybe a text, maybe some type of banner where maybe you have a design kind of explaining what you do. And you also want to have your stories on there, which I personally like to take on the stories kind of like little headlines that people can kind of just get what they need in an instant rather than having to sit there through a an, through an entire IGT video or through an entire YouTube video. And then last but not least, you want to make sure that you have your CTA, which is your call to action, because what good is all this work if maybe you don't uh, point them in the right direction to maybe clicking to the link in the bio, or if maybe you have a little uh, icon that says, hey, click on this link right here to schedule a call with me or swipe up if you have the swipe up feature, swipe up so that you can get your hands on this product. And again, you don't need the swipe up, but if you do have that, then just go ahead and use it since it's already at your disposal. So there you have it. Those are some tips and tricks that you can use to literally make $100 a day. Just think about what your product is worth. If it's a $50 product, you only need two customers. If maybe it's a $25 product, you only need four customers. If maybe you're selling a higher ticket item, that's maybe an ebook and maybe a, a call with you or maybe an ebook and maybe a DIY setup, then maybe that's $100, whatever that price tag is, you just start to work the numbers backwards. And once you work the numbers backwards, that'll let you know more so how much more content you need to put out and what content is used, uh, what content is working for you that you can use to really double down on. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you haven't done so already, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below, join the official community. Don't forget that anytime we're not posting on here, we're posting over on our podcast style channel, which is the Inside with Irv show. So if you like what we have going on over here, you'll love what we have going on over there. And as always, I want to thank our sponsors over at Webo, where if you deposit $100, they will literally give you four free stocks valued up to $1,600. And don't forget that we also have our exclusive member group where you get behind the scenes tools and resources to financial literacy. That link is also down in the description. Once again, I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time, everyone, I will see you in the next video.